So we're going to create a melody here. And this, when we start with a melody and we harmonize it, in music we call this, we call this a cantus firmus. That's Latin for fixed melody. And um, there's a lot of times where you want to harmonize a fixed melody. You don't want to change the melody. You don't want to change the melody. You take an existing melody and you create a harmony around it. This, you know, again, has a popular thing to do. It's been going on for hundreds of years where people have taken a cantus firmus and harmonized it. So we're going to take a simple melody that we're going to call teapot. change that to a half note. Okay, so everybody knows this melody. Right, everybody knows that. So let's just start harmonizing it. Let's, um, you know, we don't want to use any dissonant intervals. We want to use um, the perfect intervals uh, we, we can't use two in a row. We don't want to use parallel perfect intervals. So let's just make it as simple as possible and just make everything parallel motion and just see what it sounds like. So what does this sound like? I mean, it's not terrible right? It's just not interesting. It's just not good. So we don't want to have three of the same types of intervals in a row. So what we could do just to make this easier is kind of break this up a little bit. Um, we have third, third, third. Let's make this into a sixth, another imperfect consonance. <laughs> okay, so all I had to do here was make these into sixths and let's listen to how it sounds now. Already a lot more interesting, right? And where does it sound interesting in particular? So right here where we go from the third to the sixth here, you hear that, that um, counterpoint exchange? That's because we're now using contrary motion. The E goes up to the F, and the C goes down to an A. That sounds really good. We have parallel motion, parallel motion, and then uh, that is not parallel motion. Sorry. Nah, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. And then... See how we have the contrary motion here? It sounds good when we do that. So I'll play it with that change. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Okay, now let's say we just went crazy with this and we just put some dissonant intervals here. Let's put a fourth here, um, a seventh. I don't know, we'll make this in to an octave. We'll just have a bunch of parallel octaves. And then let's have a, another seventh here and then we'll end with a let's end with a tritone. Alright, let's hear what this sounds like with all of the dissonant intervals. Okay, so that sounds kind of wacky. It's still more interesting than the thirds, in my opinion, like all the parallel stuff. The parallel octaves, we don't do that. It's extremely boring um, to use parallel perfect intervals. We never want to do that. If, if we have a, per, a perfect interval, the next interval should be an imperfect consonance. Um, all of the dissonance just makes it sound crazy. So let's see what we can do with this. Um, so we're going to start with a unison here. The only time you should use a unison is on the very first note of the piece or the very last note of the piece. So let's take advantage of that rule and go ahead and use it here. And then try to get as much contrary motion going as possible. Okay, 
I like that sixth there. And then um, we'll leave that octave. That's going to be fine. Let's leap down to this E. And then... All right, let's let's give that a go and see what that sounds like. Um, I need to change this. There we go. All right. So see how we have a lot of contrary motion here, lots of contrary motion. Um, we have oblique motion here, but pretty much this whole thing is going to be contrary motion. We have mostly imperfect consonances. Imperf we have a perfect unison third here, perfect fifth. That's a six. That's an imperfect consonance. We have an octave, so we're kind of alternating between perfect and imperfect. Then we have um, we have this imperfect consonance, imperfect consonance, imperfect consonance, perfect fifth. So let's hear what this sounds like. Now something sounded wrong. Um, B against a C. That's going to be a ninth, and that is a dissonance. So we don't want to have that dissonance here. We wanted an A. That was a wrong note. So let's try that again. Hmm. I don't love it. I don't love it because we're leaping into this perfect fifth. Let's let's make this into a third and see if that sounds better. I like that a lot better. Okay, now why was this such a mess to do? Look at the melody. Okay, look at the cantus firmus. We have a leap here, we have a leap here, we have a leap here, and a leap here. Lots of leaps. They're not prepared very well. This is prepared in the same direction as the leap. Uh, and so it's just a mess to harmonize. We were able to harmonize it. It sounds all right, but that's kind of the point of getting that quote-unquote good melody because it's easier to harmonize um, and it's just easier to, to do what we want.